All right, on the bench today, out of a 2017 Dodge Ram 2500 with a 6.4, we have the 66 RFE, rear wheel drive, six speed, and it's a four by four. All right, 111,000 miles on this. So what's going on with this is when you hit fourth gear, it runs away, just neutralizes, and there's nothing there. Okay, we did a, there's no codes written down here, but it says on the sheet we did a code scan. Normally what happens there is we do put the scanner on it because we like to record everything, especially in the engine and in the transmission. But there was so much that it was, you know, a little too much to write down. You'll be sitting there for a while writing all the codes down. So what we did is a code scan with the snap-on scan tool and it gets saved in the scanner. So if we need to refer to that, we can find it and print it out and look at it that way also. All right, so I don't really have, you know, specific codes for you, but a code scan was done because this thing had a lot, a lot of codes. All right, so I ran the plate through Shopkeep Pro and that's how it came up with the 66 uh, RFE. I thought it might have been the 68, but I mean, that's what it, I, I believe that was the only choice it came up with. So that's what I'm going by. All right, we're going to open this up. I'm going to see what we find as far as running away in fourth. Now, this is a 2017. All right, this was definitely worked on. I don't know if it was really overhaul, but at, at most they probably did a solenoid pack maybe to try to fix the problem. I'm not sure. I don't know much history on this, um, on this vehicle. But what I can tell you is you can see the solenoid pack has the white plastic. Okay, so that technically was used up to 2010. All right, I believe it was 2010. And then what happened is they came out with the 68 RFE and they redid the hydraulics and they redid the solenoid pack. They eliminated the overdrive solenoid. Okay, so on the, well, that would be a gray connector. So they now use on the 2010 and up the multi-select solenoid to apply the overdrive clutch. But you can use this, you know, on any year. This is the solenoid pack to use. You can't get, like if you had a 2008, just to give you for instance, and you put the gray solenoid pack on the 2010 and up, you're gonna have a code because the overdrive solenoid has been eliminated. So 2010 and up, they changed the solenoid pack, they changed the valve body, went from seven check balls to five check balls. Basically to simplify, I guess maybe the valve body is what they're saying. Um, but they swapped it around to, to use the multi-select solenoid to apply the overdrive clutch. Um, so that's why I'm saying for a 2017 to see this solenoid pack, when I overhaul this, I'm gonna put a solenoid pack on, it's also gonna have a white connector. But if this transmission was never touched, it should have a gray connector. So probably they, they did a solenoid pack, maybe at one point to try to fix the problem or something like that. You know, maybe some of the codes were ship solenoid A stuck off or whatever the case may be, I don't really remember. So seeing that with the solenoid code, but even though the computer is blaming the solenoid and the clutch is no good, they may elect to throw a solenoid pack in it. So, because this definitely does not belong in a, in a fresh tra transmission. All right, so uh, just want to give you a little history there on, uh, on the gray solenoid pack. Uh, all right, so let me get a little closer. We'll start taking this apart. You have your input se speed sensor, your output speed sensor, solenoid pack. And around this side, you have your line pressure sensor. I'm not sure if they make those on the aftermarket or not, but I only go OP with those sensors. Uh, cooling lines in here, and yeah, this doesn't look like this plate's ever been touched. This thing's pretty rusty, so we're gonna take this plate off. I'm gonna get a new one. But we gotta clean all this real, real good. So the new plate will go right on and that snap ring will go in. And just take a look at the plate real close. I, uh, I remember I did a big, uh, a big um, Dodge Ram. And after it was done, it started leaking out of the front. And here's the front seal here, so we had to take it back down again. And when you start 
when I really was concentrating on it and looking at the, the plate, it was at a it was at a round, it was out of shape. So I put another one on it and fixed it, but it's just a pain to pull the thing out again to do that. Uh, all right, so let me get a little closer. We're gonna take the two sensors off, we'll probably get the tail off. I took some of the bolts out here. I'm uh, gonna get the snap ring out of the front, flip it, and take the pan down, valve body, and, and then take the uh, internals out and see why this thing was running away and forth. Fluid did smell a little burnt. So let's see what we find. I'll get a little closer and we'll get started. Okay, so let's start here. Let's get these sensors out. Sometimes these bolts, you know, they don't come out so, so easy. All right, input speed sensor. Now the output. If the bolts are a little tight here for the input and the output, you can take, um, what I usually do is I'll get like a, maybe a small hammer like this, put it up against the head of the bolt and give it a couple of taps, see if you can kind of shock it loose. And if not, you'll have to drill it. And I've, you know, broke some here, broke some there, you gotta drill it out. The last one I did, the other uh, bolt was broken. Try, I was trying to get it out for the uh, line pressure sensor, but I drilled it out perfect and put a coil in it, and everything worked out good. Okay, there is that, and this again, only I only go OE on that sensor. I'm not even sure if they make it on the next market, but or if maybe one of these companies like Rastro or something makes it, but I, I don't think I would use it. All right. Let's get the extension off. I drain this as best I can. So the extension is 15 millimeter. Let me bring this down a little bit. this uh, extension housing or adapter plate or whatever the dealer calls it. I got another one of these here now that's out that I got to do and this is broken. Uh, whoever, whoever worked on the guy's truck has royally screwed it up and I think they left a couple of the bolts loose um, where, where the transfer case bolts up and this housing is cracked and you can't really get one used. Let me just blow this down a little bit. So new, just to give you a heads up, new from Dodge. The list is about $600. Okay, I get a discount, of course, on parts, so I paid less, but you want to be very careful with this housing if you're working on this train. I did find one, and yeah, see this thing's all loaded up with silicone, so somebody was in here. Um, I did find a used one, and they wanted uh, $375 plus shipping, and uh, with the percentage I get off and stuff, it, you know, it would have probably come out to four, or a little more than four, not much more getting a, a new one. All right, so let's get the snap ring out. There 
goes to snap. I'm going to get my magnet so I can slide that part here out. Okay. All right. The next. Get rid of this here. Let's get the big snap ring out. So I'm going to clean this snap ring up here on the wire wheel and also where the, the groove that it sits in is going to go all clean. Okay. And then we'll knock the cover out from the inside. It's very possible this may have been overhauled, but I'll take a look. All right. Green. I had this thing turned upside down for a while, but it's still a lot of fluid. All right, my eight millimeter. Also, it looks like a possibly a fairly new pan too. Oh yeah, see now we got different bolts here. Oh yeah, this thing was rough. Huh? They're probably stripped down. I never fixed them. I gotta remember to fix these before I put this transmission back together. I just finished a 4R100. That's on the other bench here. I don't know if you can if you can see it. Let me uh, uh, that one right there. I just finished it. And that one has about I'm gonna say 21 pan bolts. And 17 of them were different. They had 17 different pan bolts. Long ones, short ones, the wrong ones. And they butchered up the coils. I had to take them out, re redo everything. But I got it all straightened out. I probably had to do a total of uh, probably 10 helicoils between the pan and the pump. And even this one. Coils coming through the pan here. Of course, the fresh ones are the ones that I like. When you get these things in, that's been done already, they're 10 times worse.
filter. Six eight mil eight millimeter bolts. body with the, the solenoid pack. The early one, but again, it definitely wasn't worked on. Then you got a snap ring sticking out here that really shouldn't be, because you got to keep this clear because when the snap ring sits, uh, sticks out, the valve body keeps these seals, uh, seals on the valve body here. These two keeps these seals from sealing. possible over time that could be why the fourth clutch went bad. I mean if you put the valve body, I'm sorry, the snap ring across this way and put the valve body on, probably burn this thing out on the road test. Okay, uh, let's get that cooler return filter off. I'm going to change. Okay, this is the steel one, and it has the seal inside. The earlier one uh, takes the seal on the pump, and it's aluminum. Kind of got to get down to a science how to put those those covers on, especially the aluminum ones, because you'll bend it all up and distort it trying to put the thing on. All right, 10 millimeter. We'll get the pump bolts out. Friction. Take a look. 
And right now we're going to get the snap ring out. Bring this down a little bit. flat on one side, bevel on the other, and the bevel will face up. Okay. I'm gonna get the stack ring out here. This is more like a spacer. And this one it's okay if it if it goes across the back, you know, the, the big one. There and there. Okay, line it. Should have three of these. Okay, got three. just a sprig. I didn't think that was going to come out so easy. All right, so that's the low sprig that goes in the uh, in the low drum, which we're going to get out now. I just want to get some of the oil out so I can see the snap ring. There's the snap ring that holds the uh, drum in. Also, this is a uh, bevel, and that's going to face up. Now let's get the low drum out. And the case is strict. Okay, so what I want to do now. You're going to get rid of the oil, get rid of the case, and we'll open up the drums, take a look at those, and finish it up. All right, so I will be back in a little bit, and we'll finish up the video. All right, so let's take a look. This is the low clutch, low reverse. All right, so this sprig, you know, just drops in like that. So we're going to hold the inner race, and the outer race will freewheel uh, clockwise and lock counterclockwise. They should be thinking one sided. Yes, they are. Okay. So here's the one sided frictions. All right, in here we got the split ring, the velvet return, and the molded piston. Okay. That. Check this. All right, so. We've got a bearing here and the sun gear. We've got a washer that locks in place and a bearing that goes on top of the washer. This is the fourth clutch. And on this transmission, the fourth clutch is on in third and fifth. The overdrive clutch comes on in fourth. Now, it is burnt out though, this is not that great. Okay, let me 
position here. Back it out a little bit. Okay. All right, so first we'll get the reverse clutch out. clutch is uh, no good and it's reverse clutch is uh, reverse input is a uh, double-sided the rest of these should be single-sided so let's see if we can get the hub out all right yeah the clutch looks like it's burnt out okay find the opening give me one second Somebody gonna be here about 1:30. All right. Here's the pressure plate, and this is. See, these are double-sided. It's like hit and miss because normally, if you have single-sided low reverse, you should have single-sided, but I don't. And these are no good. So this is the reason it was running away in fourth. This part just completely wiped out. That's the underdrive. All right, so let's do this. Snap ring. Okay, bearing here. All right, now. Got a thick thick snap ring here. Got to find the end. And then we're going to get the underdrive clutch out. All right, so it's a real thick snap ring. Um, all right, so what I want to try to do is get behind it with a thin screwdriver. Very heavy snap. I gotta kind of move it. I gotta kind of move it out of the way to get the thin screwdriver behind it. Yeah. 
Ahoj. So these are the underdrive and these look bigger too. Steers I gotta get as well. Yeah, these are freaking shot. get that input shaft out. Got a very sharp, thin scribe here. You get the snap ring up, a little wire clip if you will. And there's a bearing here that goes there. Here's the little wire clip. All right, so there is a like a drain back check ball in here, and we can test it. Sounds okay. So we figured it was the single sided, but the low reverse is, so I just gotta, but no big deal. It is what it is at this point. <clears throat> okay, uh, let me get another socket. We'll take the pump apart, finish it up. Okay, it's my 30. Let's open up the pump, and then we're good to go. So you have your pressure regulator here, your lockup valves here, um, uh, TCC accumulator, spring brake salon, TCC limit valve. This will give you a hard engagement. If this spring breaks, it'll make it stall uh, on engagement. 
okay? This plate will come right up, but sometimes you got a couple of bolts, small torque 25 bolts in this, and if you see them, of course you gotta make sure you put them back. If you leave them out or leave them loose, um, this thing will not move because it's gonna have to make a, it's gonna produce a big leak. All right, here are the gears. shuttle valve here and what that is it's, it's like a two-stage pump it gets at, a, at an idle um, you're getting pressure from the primary and secondary side of the pump but as you pick up speed and the pump calls for more pressure this will close and you'll just get your pressure from the primary side of the pump <clears throat> So I think that that is about it. You know, we'll just take another fast look at this valve body. So I'm going to take this plate off, redo these accumulator seals in here. New solenoid pack for sure. New seals here. And here's all the little pressure taps. So there's no external pressure taps. If you need to check pressures in this transmission, you've got to buy a special pan with adapters. And you've got to check pressures that way. Is it on this 17 Dodge Ram 2500 66RFE runs away in fourth. We found the overdrive clutches just completely wiped out, and these are the underdrive, not far behind. But here is your reason for running away in fourth. All right, so now the cleanup process begins, but not today, and we'll probably do that tomorrow. And that's it. So I thank you guys for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you next one.